Hi, my name is John Fram. I'm the project manager for the Endurance Array portion of the Ocean Observatories Initiative. And today I'm going to give you a virtual tour of Oregon State University's facilities that support the uh, OI. So this is a map of the Endurance Array. You can see our gliders off the coast of Oregon and Washington and the numbers one through six correspond to our sites that each have a profiler and a surface mooring. In the bottom right, you can see uh, three cities in Oregon, Pacific City, where the cabled array um, comes to shore that's operated by the uh, University of Washington. And uh, you can see Corvallis, which is the home of Oregon State University and Newport, which is where the Coastal Endurance Array UNOS cruises almost always start and end. Uh, OSU is, our main campus in Corvallis is about a one hour drive from Newport. And the uh, facility that I'm talking to you from the Ocean Observing Center is in uh, Corvallis. Uh, Newport, where um, the, the cruises uh, start and end is, also uh, the home of OSU's ship operations and to NOAA's Pacific Marine Operations Center. Um, they each have piers that um, are used for uh, the, the endurance array cruises, um, as well as, as um, the um, often the cable array and station popper cruises. Um, at OSU ship ops, there are um, facilities that we use for the endurance array, including crane forklifts and, and lots of other resources that are, are made available to us. OSU operates um, one UNOS vessel, the uh, Oceanus, which is used for the large mooring operations. And also um, there are three other um, smaller vessels that are operated by OSU out of Newport um, that we use for the endurance array. Uh, one is the Pacific Storm, uh, which we use for multi-day trips for gliders and coastal surface piercing profiler uh, cruises. Um, this ship allows us to get to the Washington line part of the Endurance Array and also the Oregon line that is um, uh, close to Newport. The RV Alaka is a, a ship we use for day trips that we use to service the Oregon line uh, profilers and gliders. And the uh, even smaller vessel is the RV Kalipi, which is trailerable, so we can use it from any port um, for glider operations during uh, calm seas. On the Oceanus and on the Alaka, we can also do uh, CTVs, uh, which we uh, like to do um, adjacent to uh, the profilers when we deploy them and. Um, uh, associated with each glider deployment. Here's a map, uh, a Google map of Corvallis, and um, you can see uh, Google's chosen two ways to get from the main campus down to our facility in South Corvallis. Um, the main campus houses uh, the Environmental Computing Center uh, run by the College of Earth, Ocean, and Atmospheric Sciences. Uh, that I'm part of, uh, and the ECC has um, the uh, the OMC part of the endurance array. Sorry for the acronym. It's the uh, um, it's all of our servers that uh, we use to gather data, store data, and then relay data to um, OI cyber infrastructure. Um, OSU several years ago installed fiber optic cable um, down Route 99, which goes from campus down to um, our facility. Um, so um, we have the same internet access that one has from the main campus. Uh, now let's uh, walk inside the the uh, the OOC as we call it, the Ocean Observing Center. Um, this is the entry from the street and you can see in the upper left and in the bottom right, you can see um, the Google Earth view um, of the, the building, the rectangular building and the much larger rectangular um, parking lot that we um, is the exclusive use of um, our project. We have 
a couple of trailers from some other projects, but it, 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 is, it is all ours. And, um, and this really makes us able to do the whole endurance array uh, refurbishment operations here. Um, all of our equipment can be stored here and, um, and we can do our mobilizations and demobilizations um, with uh, large trucks that come into our parking lot. Um, and we can do them all at once. Um, uh, we typically do three trucks um, at a time. We send six to the coast for each of the major cruises. Um, uh, but, you know, it, the lot has plenty of space. Um, this is what the building looked like when we when we uh, bought the building. So the building was not built for OI for use, uh, but um, for operating the endurance array. But um, since it was an empty warehouse, we had the opportunity to um, customize it to for this project. Um, and so we did that in uh, 2011, 2012, and um, this is what it looks like this week. So. Um, in the bottom left is uh, the floor plan of the interior of the first floor. And um, in the yellow or orange, depending on your perspective, um, is um, the, our offices. Um, we have two sets of offices, the, the hallway you see in the middle uh, with the separated offices and then the cubicles uh, down on the other side near our break room. And uh, and then we have a conference room, which of course is empty right now. Um, it's a, it's really a vibrant, wonderful place to work. Unfortunately, right now um, we can only have uh, uh, two people in this area at, at, at once, and one on each side of the of the of the offices, and um, and then the building as a whole. Um, you know, we're limited to to six people at at once. Um, because this building is devoted to OI, um, we can control who goes in and out, and um, we're able. We've been able to keep going in, in a way that the um, labs that are on the main campus that are shared among many projects and have uh, many people going in and out. They've been much more limited. Um, so having our own building has. Um, has really made it possible for us to continue um, through this uh, difficult year. So let's walk out of the offices over to the, the first room on the, the right side in the, in the, the diagram on the bottom left. Uh, this is our uh, electronics lab. And um, you can see uh, what we're doing this week. Um, well, what we do on many weeks is um, checking and servicing cables. We have thousands of cables and they're checked after each cruise so we can see their degradation over time, understand when we need to replace them. And since, um, well gosh, most failures happen because of cables and connectors, it's really important that we um, uh, take special care to, um, to track these. And so that's what the picture on the right side is our cable checker. Um, uh, this is also the place where we you can see what's happening right now. They're conditioning and batteries. Um, those are the batteries on the on the floor there. Um, um, but all sorts of uh, electronics servicing and upgrades happen here. Um, this is also where we put together the um, the kits that we use. If you can see the um, the Tupperware bins in the back, so each of those bins will have a set of cables for um, a platform. And so when it's time to put together um, all the uh, uh, electronics and instruments onto a platform, you take the kit, you go over there and you can you have what you need to get going. Um, so this is the electronics lab. And then we're gonna move to the next room down. And this is the profile and instrument lab. And it's a, it's a longer room. So let's start from the part near the door and, and work ourselves back as if you were actually on a tour of the lab. Um, the first set of tables, um, the, that's where we um, do quality conformance testing of instruments when they get returned from our vendors. So they get checked here and then, um, and then they'll go up to the um, uh, storage and mezzanine until they're ready to be integrated. And uh, this space is also used for 
servicing acoustic releases. So each of our moorings have um, are deployed with three acoustic releases. Um, and um, you know, we could send them back to the vendor annually, but we do it here, it saves money. And, and we've had um, in the last few cruises, 100% success rate um, uh, with the releases. So we wanna continue doing that work. And um, uh, in the, this room also has our um, chemical facilities, fumarid water maker, and, um, and the, the chemistry that we do here, um, uh, including all of our water sampling supplies. And then if you move to the back half of the room, the back third of the room is where we service our crystal surface piercing profilers. Uh, you can see one of them in the blue in the, on the, in the upper picture. Um, and then all of the supplies we need to service those are in the back there. Uh, let's move from there to the next room over, which is the platform lab. So um, there's two things that happen here. One is we service components uh, such as the electronics bottles. And you can see the um, cart full of, of the electronics bottles there. Um, uh, we, the, if you need to open it up, you do that in the electronics lab, but, but um, we can program them and, and do some testing here. Um, and the, the main pur purpose of this room is to take um, uh, components that have been serviced and to put them on platforms. So we have uh, in the picture here, what's happening this week is they're putting together these two halos of telemetry bottles for two moorings. And so, um, they're attaching them on there and then they'll plug everything in, test it out. And once it's ready, it'll go to the high bay and be attached to a buoy and then go through integration testing there. Um, so this is the platform lab. And let's move to the last room on uh, our set of labs, which is uh, the glider lab. Um, so here you can see, uh, um, many gliders. Uh, these pictures were taken at different times, so we don't actually have as many gliders as, as you can see in all of these pictures. Uh, we have 12. We try to keep six in the water at a time. Uh, so in the center on the tables is where we service gliders. You can see two of them um, being pulled apart right now. They'll be put back together, ballasted in the tank that's in the back of the room. You can see there's an electric hoist that then can um, put them in the ballast tank. Uh, and then once they're ready to go, um, we take them outside to the compass stand that is um, away from everything metal. Um, and we calibrate the compass and do a functional checkout and it's ready to go. And then the ones in the wall here, uh, were, some of them were ready to deploy, others were just being stored um, to, be, um, to be prepared. Um, also in this room, we have everything one needs to uh, needs in order to work on the on the gliders, and also we have a kit for uh, going to sea in the small boat. So you just grab those two um, pelican cases and two boxes, and it has everything one needs to do glider or CSPP um, cruises. So let's walk out of the glider lab over to the stairs, you can see there, we go up the stairs to the mezzanine, which is above the, those three labs that we um, just walked through. And um, in the mezzanine is shown in the upper two panels on, on the right here. Uh, this is where we have our instrument cases, either um, empty cases for the instruments that are at sea or um, cases with instruments that are, are ready for integration um, stored and cataloged um, here. We also have some other uh, larger components like the halos that you see in the center here. Um, if we look from the mezzanine uh, across to the far other side of the, um, of the OOC, uh, you see a loft and um, in that loft is um, materials, consumables like tape and small items like uh, nuts and bolts and, and, and clamps, uh, whereas the mezzanines for equipment, the, um, the loft is for materials. Um, in the loft is also a, a climate controlled server room uh, for the um, 
servers for this building, not the OMC, which is on, on, on the main campus. For larger items, um, we have a set of racks on the wall. So things like buoy wells that are you know, over a thousand pounds, uh, we, um, we have there. So looking from the mezzanine out, you can look into the, the main big area of the building, which is the, the high bay. And that's where we assemble buoys and other large components uh, like the, the multifunction nodes or MFNs, um, buoy wells. That's where we build our line packs um, that go inside our anchors. Um, <clears throat> the way we move big things around there is through a, a gantry, gantry cane that uh, um, can, can reach everywhere in the high bay. Um, and then if you look in the, um, the panels on the right, those are the same view from the mezzanine, but taken at different times of the year. So in the bottom right, that was taken uh, November 1st. And, and uh, that's what we're doing this week. And the panel above it, that's taken at a time much closer to deployment where we're um, putting the electronics in blue wells where there's, it's a lot more, um, a lot more going on. And there's plenty of space in the high bay to do all the work that we need to do for the endurance array. Um, the, the panel in the center shows uh, one side of the high bay that has um, specialty tools, our, our machine shop where we can uh, build unique um, items, things that we don't need many of. If we need many of something, we'll, we'll send it out to um, uh, uh, be built elsewhere. Um, but unique parts like the um, the lowering re release that you see in the picture on the far left, um, that is the triangle that's holding up the, um, the MFN. That will be lowered onto the sea floor and, and then released. And so we built that here um, in the machine shop um, on that side of the high bay. Um, we also can do repairs and welding of titanium, aluminum, and steel um, in that area. Okay, so that's the high bay and let's uh, move outside. Um, this is um, November 1st, a sunny day in Corvallis. Um, these are the pictures from our security cameras. So we have a secure lot here. Um, so we keep track of everything. And, um, and this gives you a sense of the scale of our stuff to the side of the parking lot. Um, and now let's take a tour of the lot of the, the items inside of it. So one thing you saw from the, the pictures from the security cameras was um, four tents. Um, two of the tents store our large vehicles. Um, one of them is a crane and you can see in the bottom right, the crane lifting up the stretchos. So um, after every cruise, we take the stretchos, uh, clean it, measure it, see, um, uh, to see if it's inelastically stretched or whether it is able to flex normally and thus be able to be redeployed. And then we put it back into the box, that you, the black boxes that you can see in the picture there. Um, and the other vehicle you can see to the right of the, the crane is the uh, our large forklift, which, which is needed to lift the buoys um, in, in, in and out of the high bay and for things that we don't really need the crane for. Uh, the crane can lift more than, than the, uh, the, the forklift, but um, it's not as agile. Um, in the back, you can see the tent for the heavy lift winch. So that is um, the large winch that we uh, designed and had built uh, for this project. And it is, it's, big 17,000 pound winch. It's required to be able to recover the anchors from our moorings, our surface moorings, and um, to uh, recover our buoys. And so um, this winch we store here and then to get out of the tent, the tent uh, slides on rails. You can see the red rails in the picture. And then we can go over it with the crane, lift it onto a truck and the truck goes directly to uh, Newport. 
the other thing that I'd like to show you in this picture is uh, there's a green arrow to um, a, uh, a steel square on the, the black top. And that's where we've surveyed in uh, a place to attach our compass stand that we used to calibrate compasses for all of the um, instruments with compasses like the gliders and the um, uh, velocity profilers um, and, uh, uh, and, and the like. Uh, as I mentioned, there's, there's room for lots of storage here. Um, and so we store things that we uh, don't need to or want to have in, in the OOC. Um, so for example, uh, lithium batteries are stored in an air conditioned uh, van that's in the parking lot. Um, uh, a sea van, a shipping container. Um, there are racks here for all weather equipment. There are some of our larger um, components like the EM chains you can see in the picture. There's two each for these um, uh, weldments or carts that we've built for transporting and stacking these EM chains. Um, and there's also a place in here where we store propane, there's a paint shed, you know, other things we don't want to have in the building. Um, and we also have our C van, which is the top picture there. And that's the van that we use, um, uh, that we put on the deck of, of the UNOL ships that we use uh, when we do our large mooring cruises. In addition to a storage space, the parking lot is a, is a workspace. Um, we, we do many things in here, um, uh, including uh, ballasting our coastal surface piercing profilers. Uh, you can see next to uh, the van in the, in the picture on top, uh, to the right of that van is, is the tank that we use for ballasting the profilers. Uh, I have a picture of that same tank taken during the fires we had a couple months ago. Uh, and you can see the difference in the color of the air um, and those two days. Um, I didn't do anything to those pictures. Uh, also, uh, you can see in the picture in the top two tanks that we use to check for ground faults uh, during burn-in. Uh, so we can put uh, platforms in, in these tanks and move these tanks around um, so that we can check for faults during burn-in and, and, and operate uh, these platforms during burn-in in, in, in water. Um, our main burn-in area is the, the tent that you can see in the security camera photo in the bottom here. Um, so during burn-in, we'll line up the moorings around there and, um, and have that be kind of the, the center of, of our, our burn-in work. Burn -in work. Um, it looks kind of like in the, the painting that you see in the bottom left. Uh, the painting was done by uh, so we feel we she was one of the undergraduates that has uh, come to sea with us. Uh, we've had uh, art students on, on several of our cruises. Uh, they do some photo documentation for us and, um, and then also get an opportunity to do their artwork while they're at sea with us. Um, okay, so that's the workspace here. And I just have one more picture um, of our lot during a different time of year. Um, this is, I think I took this in November, but not, not this year, previous year. Um, so thank you for listening, and, um, and I hope you can come out and visit in person sometime.